Hello everybody, parents and children who normally meet in the point. I'm so glad you're able to be here. I know we can't really sit close to each other and we can't really hug each other, but we can still get together. And aren't you glad we've got things like computers and uh, email and links and Zoom and all those new words we're learning? It's so good because we can still get together even without being in the same room. But I do miss you, you know, I really do miss you sitting in our classroom and learning and teaching each other about how to follow Jesus. In this time when we're trying hard to follow the rules, right? And the reason we're doing it is to protect people and help them not to get sick. So we know that we can't meet together. We keep some distance from people who are around us and we do it because we want to help each other. Do you think there's ways that you can help other people? Can you think about that for a second? What can you do to help somebody right now? Maybe you've got a friend who's feeling very lonely. Is there something you can do to reach out to that friend? Could you ask your parents maybe to send an email? Or maybe you could even pick up the phone and phone them. Wouldn't that be great? We're all trying to help someone. And there's a, an amazing church that's helping us and all kinds of churches by sending out the lessons every Sunday so we can keep on learning through the stories about Jesus. And you know that last Sunday, the story of course was about Jesus' last days on earth and his death on the cross. And the cross that you see reminds us that Jesus did die. And in dying, he took the punishment for my sin and for yours. But this Sunday, we're in celebration mode, aren't we? We are celebrating because Jesus did not stay dead. And he, he rose again. God brought him back to life. When they went to the graveyard to find his body, he wasn't there. He had already risen and had already gone and spoken to people. So the cross is empty because there, Jesus is not on the cross anymore. He's alive. I don't know, how do you celebrate Easter in your house? Do you have some things that you do every year that remind you? I don't know if you can see this uh, little tree or this, these branches here, but in uh, Germany, this is what people do every year. So because we can go outside, if there's nobody around, so we're allowed to go outside and we look for branches and we cut a few of them off. And those branches are pretty dead looking, you know? Um, so we cut them off, we bring them in, put them in a jar, and we hang some Easter eggs on there. Now, why do you think we put eggs on a tree? Doesn't make sense, does it? But eggs remind us about new life, right? Eggs remind us about new life. So then we, once we get the branches in the water, we go and every day we go to check and look at them and see what's happening. What do you think might happen to those branches over time? Yes. Some of them have not only had buds on them, but let me find one, this one here. Not only a bud, but then leaves and a flower. So when we look at those branches, we see that new life is happening. New life is happening. And that's the message of Jesus Christ, isn't it? New life for you and for me. So when we learn good news, we want to share it with other people. And we also want to take time to thank God for the good things he's done for us. So be grateful, right? And I think Mrs. PLC already told you before about a great thing you can do as a family, a gratitude journal, where you find a book or you write down something every day about which you're happy, that you're glad, that you're grateful that God has allowed you to see or to experience or to have. And then when we all do get back together, whoops, when we all do get back together at the point, then maybe you could bring your journal and then we can look back and say, wow, 
Look at all the good things that God allowed us to see and feel and touch and know, even in a difficult time. So the gratitude journal is important, as well as learning verses from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Let me just quickly read them to you. These are verses we're going to all try to memorize. And if your family memorizes it, take a video of yourself, all of you saying it together, and send it into the office at Living Hope. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. Then you'll experience God's peace that exceeds anything we can ever understand. His peace will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. So, boys and girls, as you now, I think school has started online, so you may be a little more busy, but take the time to try to memorize the verses, and we'll see how God blesses and honors that. So this is a special Sunday, Sunday, Easter Sunday, 2020, very unusual times, but the message is so still the same. Jesus Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. May I pray with you before I go? Father God, we are so grateful to you because you have loved us with an everlasting love. And Jesus, your son, came so that we could be freed from sin and live a free life, abundant life, a full life. Help us to live like that message is really true in our lives and help us to share it with people who don't know yet the good news. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. We are so thankful, God, for your blessings, for the people that you've put around us. We pray for people who may be sick right now. We pray for people who are working with the sick. Oh God, protect them and keep them safe. And we want to see uh, all of our friends again someday soon. Thank you for being with us, even in the tough times, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.